Chapter 1 She was being followed. The night was thick with humidity. Memphis's streets shone ink black with wetness. The rain long stopped. Streetlights provided a jaded glow that made spots of pavement look as if they were trying to sparkle, but gave up halfway through the effort. Empty. The victim's heels clicked in an idiosyncratic rhythm, a sign of the damage done from the club she should have left hours ago. She tugged at her too short purple skirt that kept raising up beyond the danger point of her mid-thigh. Inside the club, she felt confident, normal. Acceptable and sexy. Back in the world of adults and businesses, being dressed like this made her feel open and unlike a proper member of the Southern community. This was Memphis, Tennessee, and here respectable women did not dress that way. This was big truck country, home of the most audacious outdoorsman store on the planet, a glass pyramid rising above the cityscape. This was the birthplace of Graceland, of not only Southern hospitality, with a capital S, but also Southern expectations, a place where men were men, and women were taught their roles in subtle and designed ways from before their first words. One day she would be free of Memphis's suffocating conservative culture, her true motivation for spending too much time in clubs, but right now, it was the last thing on her mind. The eyes watching her touched her in her most vulnerable places. New section. The person hiding in the alleyway also understood Memphis's culture, and for the briefest moment, they wondered if this woman, whose fate was about to change, understood. Stepping outside the place of entertainment on Beale Street would have reminded her that she was a lady, a mother, and cruising the streets of Memphis in search of a taxi in the early morning was unbecoming of all but the dirtiest of women. In the distance, over by the apartments on Vance Avenue, a dog barked. Its call rose into the early morning as if announcing that even a mangy mutt wanted to draw attention to the fact the woman in purple was a dirty whore. No one answered the animal. Only the occasional sound of a car slicing through puddles filled the night. But the victim still hitched her stride and stepped quicker. The heels she wore, tools of a Jezebel, clicked the concrete sidewalk. Tomorrow, the city of Memphis would wake to a new world. Tonight was the overture to the city's violent new beginning. The dirty whore in purple wasn't even first act quality. The killer stepped out from the black alley onto Beale Street, the centerpiece of entertainment and irresponsible joy for the city's sinners. They followed Purple Skirt, they knew her name, and Memphis soon would too. But it wasn't important now. Down Beale Street toward the Robert R. Church Park, passing the Ida B. Wells historical marker which indicated something significant had once happened in Memphis. Tonight, another entry would be added to that historical list. The victim turned down South 4th Street, her pace picking up, enough to give away her fear. This one was smart. Too smart. Too aware. The legacy couldn't fall before it began. The killer grunted quietly, half in satisfaction, the other half parted by frustration and bloodlust. Time to control. The park was near, only a few hundred feet away, and the victim made the fatal mistake of turning toward it. The killer's chest swelled with urgency, accented by excitement. They knew Purple Skirt would stick to her routine. She always did. They had planned on the park serving as the opportunity to strike, and now the moment was almost here. The victim's steps stretched as much as her too tight skirt allowed. This was perfect. The trap almost sprung. A few hundred yards deeper into the complete solitude of the park, ensured by the late hour, provided the perfect cover. Emboldened, the killer increased their strides. The victim clutched her purse to her side. Her heels drummed her panic. The killer accelerated into a run. The distance shortened. The sidewalk curved to the left, and so did the victim, heading back toward Beale Street, past the church, past a historical marker for the auditorium. 
The killer sprinted. Purple skirt wouldn't get back to Beale Street. Twenty feet. So close but still too far. And running out of time. Ten feet. Even from behind, the killer heard the victim's exhausted panting. This was fun. Five feet. Almost there. Beale Street loomed. Too many street lamps. Three feet. Almost time. Two. The victim cried, No! The killer grinned. A foot. Please! The killer lunged, laying flat as they flew into the victim. The woman in the purple skirt was soft and smelled of decaying cigarette smoke. They crashed into the concrete sidewalk. The killer cushioned by the victim. There was a crack. A bone. The victim's. She rolled, trying to escape, but the sprint around the park had exhausted her, and she didn't have much fight left. The white marble arch announcing the park's name stood sentinel for this life and death struggle. It also marked the edge of the park. They were close to the street, too close. The work had to be done fast. The legacy needed to be cemented. Yanking the eight-inch Wusthof stainless steel blade free, the rubberized handle gripped in a fist of steel rage. The rubber would ensure it wouldn't slip even after the whore's blood flowed. Down, the victim screamed as a stainless steel penetrated her flesh. Down, purple skirt cried hysterically. This would draw attention. A gloved hand over the victim's mouth muffled her cries. Down, the third stab took the fight out of the woman. Whore, the killer mocked the death of evil. Down. Hey, knock this shit off. A voice, a man's, broke the ecstasy. The killer looked up at a burly figure across the sidewalk and down the street. Thirty yards, only a few seconds to spare. Die, dirty girl. Down. Purple skirt didn't struggle. She didn't cry out. A shrouded whore, bloodied. The killer jumped to their feet taking another look at the witness, cursing their bad luck and unfinished work. They weren't going to get the time they wanted with this first one, but there would be many more. The park, dominated by two churches of different denominations, provided a sanctuary. The killer sprinted between them, through trees and down the sidewalk toward Linden Avenue, remotely aware that the witness was huffing his way to the dead woman in the blackened dress blackened to match her soul.